everybody today i'm going to talk about all the books that i read for the month of january in no particular order and this is going to be spoiler free so i read five books for the month of january which i don't think is too bad all things considered i work a full-time job i have two other youtube channels that i'm running so i'm happy with where i'm at and i hope i can continue this for the month of february the first book that i read for january was babel um it has a much longer title than that so i'm just gonna have it right here because i have the ebook version of it i read it on my kindle and then i switched over to reading it on my phone and it was amazing it was so beautiful and sad and i have a horrible time at describing what it's about but basically the protagonist robin swift um is in china he's very sick he's a little boy and he gets plucked from china and gets sent to great britain where he trains for numerous years as a translator so he's translating things because the magic system in this book are these silver bars that um if you write a good translation on it or a good word combination then it can have the powers that can be put to use by the government so those silver bars are kind of like a currency for the very rich in great britain so this book has a lot of colonialism racism because robin swift is now put into like an ivy league college where he is valued because of what he brings to the table his his bilingual skills but also they're really using him as a resource to continue to gain wealth from other nations and it's a mess um, he's going through it, um, but it's very beautiful. Like I said, I very much enjoyed it. And I, I am now very interested in this author. So I want to kind of check out all the other things that she has. And she has a new book coming out soon, which I did pre-order. So I'm super excited. But Babel was the first book that I read. And the one that left probably the biggest impact. This book is The Far Away World by Patricia Engel. I did get the signed. I went to a book signing in Brooklyn. I did a reel about it. It's on my Instagram. So Patricia Engel, I love her writing. These are sad books though. They're like achingly beautiful. Which and, and there's sadness in there because of the themes that her novels, um, this is a collection of short stories, but her literature tends to focus a lot on immigration, on love, on identity, um, and I think a lot of those topics inherently can be a little bit sad depending on what's going on. So I love this book, but this is not a book that I can recommend to everyone because I feel like not everyone's going to find it satisfying. I like it. It's a collection of short stories, like I said, kind of dealing with those types of topics. But also, I think it's a very good book at showing that you always want more as a reader. Like sometimes when there's unanswered questions, um, it can leave you being like, well, wait, I, I want to know everything. And in life, sometimes you don't get that privilege of having closure when it comes to certain scenarios and stuff like that. So I really love this book but I don't know if it's a book that everyone's gonna enjoy. And that makes me sound terrible, but it's just very, I think the first story in this one is probably the one that most people would love and gravitate towards because it's like a murder mystery, sort of. You don't really get every single answer that you're looking for. Basically, you're following two twins. One of them goes missing and the police and the family are kind of navigating through this scenario where obviously the police are assuming this is a runaway situation when really these are signs of like an abduction or something and so the book kicks off with that i think it was a smart decision because it's the one that's going to grab you most the others are a little bit slower paced they're more like a slice of life and like i said i find them sad i find them sad but i find them beautiful and i think these are important because these are things that a lot of us go through um or things that resonate with me because of my parents who are also colombian american and who came to this country with big hopes and dreams and sometimes things don't turn out the way you were expecting or wishing for. From Octavia Butler, we have Dawn. So this is a weird book. I, I've already mentioned that, but it's true. It's so weird, but in, a, in the best way possible. Basically, the protagonist is Lilith, and she wakes up in a spaceship in a room with no way of really communicating, having not seen humans in a really long time. She's one of the sole survivors of a nuclear... I don't even know what happened. Like, you're not really given specifics to what happened on earth but you know that there are very little survivors it is a nuclear war okay i just had to double check so earth went through a nuclear war and there's very few survivors and lilith was plucked from earth um and taken to a spaceship with aliens and she's meeting them and kind of trying to navigate this weird relationship where obviously they saved her but at the end of the day there's probably going to be something they want in return so that's kind of where the book takes you at the beginning Lilith is incredibly intelligent and I, I find her a little irritating but then I realized she's actually probably reacting how most people would if they were in the situation where they're kind of skeptical nervous suspicious 
Um, and the aliens just don't sound very appealing anyway. They have like a bunch of tentacles. That's how they're described. I love sci-fi, so I'm into it. We'll see when I start picking up the next ones. I think I'm going to take a little break from this because I'm currently reading Mistborn and it's so good and it's super long. So we'll see when I get to the rest of these, but I love the writing and I'm happy I picked this up. The next one is When Life Gives You Mangoes. I forgot to mention these are library copies, so that's why there's like a huge glare when I lift them up because these are laminated to protect them. These are from my local library, um, and I'm so happy that I've actually been going more often. So this is a coming-of-age middle-grade novel. I have read this right after Babel because I needed something to kind of easygoing, something a little softer, a little easier on the emotions, even though this actually ended up having a twist that was wild. I did not expect it, and there's no way I can describe anything remotely similar to it without spoiling this book so I'm not even going to try but basically the protagonist um, is growing up in an island in Jamaica and she's a sweet fun girl and she has a wonderful tight-knit community but something happened to her the summer before the novel starts and she lost her memory during a hurricane and she's kind of teased about it. This reminds me of being in elementary school when you have a best friend but you're constantly bickering over silly silly things so this book is about friendship and growing up dealing with trauma which I did not expect. This is done so seamlessly but I'm glad I picked it up. I feel like as a kid I would have really loved this too. The last book that I read for January was Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter and I tried filming a review for this novel and I had such a hard time. Usually I wing it when I talk about reviews. I just like to do like a stream of consciousness and just talk about everything that I felt but sometimes I think a little bit more structure is necessary especially with a book like this. This is like a thriller. It's very good. I, I have a love-hate with Karen Slaughter. Sometimes it leaves me feeling a little icky because all her books revolve around violence against women but if you love that fast-paced thriller crime kind of like true detective but probably a little bit more fast-paced then her books tend to be perfect for that. I love the first season of True Detective. Basically you're following the protagonist um, a couple years after the first novel. It's just hard for me to describe uh, unless I like ruined the other one but in this one in a small town protecting like a senator who's receiving anonymous death threats but also at the same time you have another timeline that is surrounding this girl who ends up passing away. She is murdered by someone in her friend group. So the main character is also protecting the senator while also trying to investigate this old murder just to see what's going on, what's happening. Um, I did enjoy it. I think there was a lot going on. This is not the first time I felt that way about Karen Slaughter books where there's a lot of different plot lines that are unnecessary and kind of become very convoluted. But I'm a sucker for it because it's so fast paced and you just want to, I mean, it, this one was a little bit slow, but in general, her, her work is like super fast paced and you're just like, oh, well, who did it? Was it this person? Was it that person? I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. But again, the violence towards women sometimes, this one isn't even that graphic. Like there's another one that I read. I want to say it was Pretty Girl. That was like, whoa, but that's just something to keep in mind if you're sensitive to those kinds of things. Totally understandable. I'm sensitive to animal deaths. I hate, 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 hate reading any of that stuff. Um, which has popped up recently in one of the books that I've read. I think in um, The Faraway World, there was a little bit, not like death, but like just like animal cruelty, like little instances of people being not so nice to animals. Can't stand that. Nonetheless, those are all the books that I read for the month of January. I'm super happy. We, we started off strong and hopefully we can keep that way. Um, I want to buy an HP Sprocket. I have one already. These are little printers. My big printer... I haven't found it since we moved um, and I have no space to plug it into my room anyway, but I want to have a sprocket, which is like these little Bluetooth speaker, not speakers, printers, and they connect to your phone and then you can just print pictures off of your uh, camera roll and it's in a sticker format. So it's not ink, it's like, I don't know, it's like paper, but the paper has the ink, whatever, science. But nonetheless, I really want that so that I can have that in my reading journal because I recently talked about my reading journal, um, or I've shown glimpses or whatever, I don't know, but we'll see, because that's like 70 bucks, because I can't find my old one, and my old one was a little bit iffy too, just in terms of the connectivity with the Blu-ray. Did I say Blu-ray? Bluetooth? I swear I know what I'm talking about, you guys. On that note, let's just end it here. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. I really, really, really appreciate it, and I will see you next time with another one. Bye. <music>